I mean, emergence is uh, is what we're talking about. It's it's basically consequences of things that have have been brewing. So you have these situations and they get into various configurations and then there's consequences and they are emergent. Um, and so things happen. But, but that knowing what's going to happen is nearly impossible because you can't actually see all the ways in which these relational processes are going to come together. And so you get surprised by emergence. Um, and, and some of those surprises are, you know, like life. A forest is in an ongoing state of emergence. It's constantly responding in all from the trees to the ferns, to the forest floor, to all the beasties and birds that, that everyone is responding and, and creating an emergent ongoing process of life that's different yesterday than it was today in order to continue Things have to discontinue, right? So emergence offers this wildness of life. Now that's the romantic version, okay? Emergence is also the root word in emergency. And emergence is not always pretty. And you can see, you know, the opiate crisis as an emergent situation that has been brewing through the conditions of all sorts of things um, from economics to um, relationship to pain to um, the, the cartels to uh, notions of, of what it means to be healthy and happy and successful and how people are responding to that to the increase in use of Adderall um, in universities and high schools to sports injuries um, and, and so on and so forth. So you get these conditions and then you get emergence that comes out of it. So is education and, a way to change the odds that future emergence might be on the positive side as opposed to the negative side? And I, I, I noted in a recent paper you wrote, you used the concept of the word pre-emergence uh can you yeah. can you tell what that means yeah and and i think for me this pre-emergence is what i'm really interested in um because by the time something has emerged it's been cooking for a while mm. And um, so pointing to things that are emerging and saying, look, this is emerging and that is emerging is kind of late mm. to the story. Um, what, what I think is interesting in right now is to ask the question, what about these past couple years of being in pandemic world what is submerging in us? What habits have changed that we're not noticing? What ways of being, what, what sorts of things have shifted um, that we may not be paying attention to, but then those things will later turn up as em emergent situations in other ways. Um, and, and I think that's a, a question that gets right at the heart of well it's it's kind of two things isn't it it's it's what's in the presuppositions what are we assuming is true and therefore our actions become a a, a direct product our decisions our way of approaching a problem is is already pre-scripted in in our assumptions about what's happening isn't isn't that what so you what? and i are trying to do with our work is pre-emergence in our conversations and our discussions with people is to change the initial conditions of emergence that will occur in the future precisely okay. precisely but but i we're not we're not with a whole lot of company because most <laughs> folks are <laughs> are looking at the problems and saying, hey, we have a problem with education. Let's fix the problem in education. But the problem in education systems is not in education systems. What is it? 
it's in culture, it's in economics, it's in what the older generation expects of the right. younger generation. So the generation. education system is downstream of our cultural values and goals. And so we just can't change that without changing the rest of it. And you, you could actually point to any part of this and say it's downstream. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, this is why for me, it keeps coming back to this notion of what got into the water with industrialism. Energy surplus and is my answer. But Energy surplus is a drug that we got really high on. Yep. And, and it actually infiltrated absolutely everything. 